In this section, we'll make the terminology asymptotic more precise by introducing some asymptotic notations. There are six of them. Big O, little o, and this similar notation. The curved less than, the curved bigger than, and the curved equal sign. If you are already familiar with these notations, please feel free to skip to the next section of the video series. Otherwise, please follow me and I will introduce them carefully. Suppose that n is an integral variable which tends to infinity. And throughout this video, whenever you see n, it always means an integer. And x is a continuous variable, which tends to infinity or zero. Or sometimes to some other limiting value. And also suppose that phi of n or phi of x is a positive function of n or x. And that f of n or f of x is any other function of n or x. With these notations and assumptions, we have first f equals big O of phi means the f's value of f is less than a times phi, where a is the independent of n or x. For all values of n or x in question. And in particular, big O of 1 means bounded by a constant. Second, f equal to little o of phi means that the quotient f of phi goes to zero as the implicit variables n or x tends to some value. For example, when n goes to infinity or x goes to zero or infinity or some other value. As we mentioned in the previous page. And third, we write f similar to phi and this notation means f over phi converges to 1. As n goes to infinity, or x tends to some value. As examples, the audience can immediately verify 10x is big O of x. Sine of x is big O of 1. x is big O of x squared. x is little o of x squared. Sine of x is little o of x log of x is little o of x delta for any delta greater than zero. And x plus 1 is similar to x, where x tends to infinity. And here, 
I want to remind the audience that although you see x is equal to big O of x squared, and at the same time x is equal to little o of x squared, as x tends to infinity, this is actually not a contradiction. This is allowed here, because this notation means x will be bounded by some constant times x squared, and this notation means x divided by x squared will tend to zero as x goes to infinity. They are both correct. And these two together do not mean big O of x squared is same as little of x squared. And as another group of examples, you can easily see x squared is big O of x. x squared is also little of x. Sine of x is similar to x. 1 plus x is similar to 1 when x tends to 0. And in particular, we observe that f equal to little of phi implies and is stronger than f equal to big of phi. Because if f divided by phi goes to zero, then f divided by phi must be bounded by a constant. Or in other words, f is bounded by a constant times phi. And now we talk about the other three symbols. f curvely less than phi means f over phi goes to zero and this is equivalent to the notation f equal to little of phi. f curvely bigger than phi means f divided by phi goes to infinity. And finally, we write f curvely equal to phi, or we say f is asymptotic to phi, and this notation means f over phi is bounded below by a positive constant and also bounded above by a positive constant. Now here, two a's are not necessarily the same, but they must be both positive and independent of variables n and x. And here you can see a convention. The convention is that we shall often use a as an unspecified positive constant. Different a's usually have different values, even when they occur in the same formula. So this is a convention we're going to use throughout this video series. And the reason to do this is that we want to avoid introducing new notations. For example, we could write f bigger than a times phi less than b times phi, or f bigger than a times phi less than a prime times phi. But of course, you can see by doing so, we'll introduce new notations b and a prime. And sometimes mathematicians will easily run out of notations. 
So here we are going to just follow hardest approach and just write f bigger than a times p and less than a times p with the understanding that a here is different from the a here. Also, let me mention another remark. Here we are defining big O of phi and little of phi in isolation. What do we mean by this? We mean big O phi denotes an unspecified f such that f is equal to big O of phi. And similarly for little o of phi. With this kind of understanding, we can perform the following operations. For example, big O of 1 plus big O of 1 is equal to big O of 1. And this is equal to little of x when x goes to infinity. And this means if f is equal to big of 1 and g is equal to big of 1, so here we assign two functions to this unspecified notation big of 1. Then f plus g will be equal to big of 1. And f plus g is also equal to little of x as x goes to infinity. As another example, we may write if we sum up n minus big of ones, then we will get big of n. So here we are using this vacuous notation new and we sum this big of 1 for new from 1 to n. And this means the sum of n terms each numerically less than a constant is numerically less than a constant multiple of n. And here, I would like to add another important remark. The relation equal asserted between big O or little symbols is not usually symmetrical. Thus, little of 1 can be equal to big of 1. This is always true. But big of 1 equal to little of 1 is usually false. Since a quantity that tends to 0 is always bounded. But a bounded quantity does not necessarily tend to zero. We may also observe that f 
similar to phi is equivalent to f equal to phi plus little phi or to f equal to phi times 1 plus little of 1. And now I have introduced all six notations. And sometimes I will use the informal notations x greater greater than 1 or n greater or greater than 1, meaning for sufficiently large x or n. Or more precisely, there exists a constant such that f bigger than that constant or n bigger than that constant. And finally, at the end of this section, let me emphasize that throughout this video series, variables x, y, t are real numbers greater or equal to 1. And the symbols m, n, h, k, etc. are positive integers. And in particular, whenever we use p, we always mean a prime number.